life as well. Did you know that when you do more than one thing at a time, your brain power is not actually using 50% to do this and 50% to do that? That the ability we found is that um, it actually requires brain power just to multitask. And you actually use roughly 40% of your thinking capacity to do more than one thing at once. So as you multitask, you're actually only putting 30% of your effort into each of these things. And if you try to do more than two things at once, okay, like three things or so on and so forth, that number compounds. And you actually get up to 60, 70, and 80% of your thinking, your brain power is used up simply in the ability to do more than one thing at once. I share that because I think sometimes if we're not careful, we can have so many things going on in our lives, so much craziness and busyness, that, that we end up in our personal time spending time with God and getting dinner ready. Spending time with God and, you know, changing the oil in the car, going shopping, uh, checking our emails, something like that. Now, I will say, I enjoy driving down the road and listening to a devotional. I get filled with the presence of God just in that personal space right there. But I think that if we're not careful in our rushing, busy days that we're in right now, that we can actually spend more effort trying to get more things done than trying to spend time with God. I invite you this morning to take all the crazy gas and busyness, set it aside, just be present in the arms of the Lord. We have some announcements for us this morning. Uh, first of all, um, I noticed that some of us have began parking in the back. Thank you so much for that. In first service, I had somebody come up to me and say, the front's empty. People are going to think the church is closed. I said, well, if people come from the other direction, they might go, oh, the church is open. You know, so. Uh, but our, our, our effort is for those who are physically able to and come here regularly to consider parking in the back. And that allows visitors to pull up in the driveway and say, oh, look, there's space for me. I don't have to go somewhere else to find a parking space and get uncomfortable. And so thank you all for your willingness to, to start that uncomfortable transition. Uh, also, I hope that y'all were able to stay safe in the storm the other day. Uh, I do want to tell you, you probably know this already, but the church does clearly have power. It has Wi-Fi. If you do not at your house and you need it, rather it's just checking emails or you have medical devices that need to transmit information, uh, please feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to set up a time for you to come to the church and get that taken care of. Lastly, uh, in addition to please always check your bulletin for, for information, uh, as you know, our church has been on this awesome journey over the last few months of both exploring where we've been and where the Lord has taken us next. Uh, yes, on this process of disaffiliation and joining in with the Global Methodist Church, but also on exploring our own history and the excitement of what the Holy Spirit is doing here and now among us. That being said, we wanted to wait until now to make this announcement because the focus is on the power of God and the Holy Spirit. But we also recognize some people really do enjoy the spiritual gift of giving. And so you may notice in the back of your bulletin, uh, because of a lot of the newer expenses that have come up, that the giving of our church um, is not meeting our needs at this moment. That is mostly due to the fact of this transition. And as you know, we just spent, it was $63,000 that the United Methodist Church charged Salem just to be able to leave. Okay, uh, And so if you would enjoy helping your congregation to be more stable, to offset those funds a bit, we would absolutely love for that, uh, for you to do so. Please just feel free to make the checks payable to the church. It will go in the general fund. That's where that 63, or when it was actually paid, finally we got down to 60,000 because of another payment made. Um, that's where those funds will go to. Uh, but in the same way that this church is not only about money, we also recognize that everything we have is a gift from God. And so we don't ask you to only give financially, but we also recognize that we should always make all options available to serve the kingdom. So if you feel led in that way, just know that that is available to you. Anything else for the good of the family? You'll join me in the word of prayer. Heavenly Father God, we thank you.
thank you so much for this chance to come into your house, to spend time with you. Lord, we, we pray right now that you teach us how to carve off all the crazy chaos that's distracting us, all the billions of things that we've done or have to get done next, and just be present with you. And in that same way, as we seek to quiet our own minds, our hearts, that you would speak into us that which you wish the individual to hear. And we will seek to glorify and worship you this day and always. As we pray this in Christ's name, amen. amen. Jesus Christ, in all kinds of languages, they themselves didn't know how to speak. 
some of the people there started picking on people who honestly didn't want to listen. Or say, oh, they're just babbling drunks. Peter stands up. St. Peter, by the way, that denied knowing Jesus three times a little while ago. He says, I'm not going to let this happen again. And he begins to unpack who Jesus is. He's like, we are not drunk. You need to understand what's happening. Out of that, several thousand are saved. And historians say that that was the Christian church's first ever preached sermon. A group of people came together out of that and didn't just create a church. They created a community of believers. They lived next to each other. And our scripture this morning talks about that very community. So check this out. In Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47, listen to this from the Word of God. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their numbers daily those who were being saved. The word of God for you, the people of God. Amen. Y'all, let's keep going in our worship by returning to God just a little what He's given to us for our tithes, our offerings, and our prayer requests. to make these beautiful baskets for 
expected mamas at pregnancy centers. We pray, Heavenly Father God, that their efforts and work would be a beautiful sacrifice to We humbly ask you to bless them, that they will go out and be representatives of your love. And may those mamas, those daddies, those soon-to-be babies, even the aunt and uncle that lives with them, may they know your love better than we do. And may we never stop knowing your love better ourselves. And so it is as your children that we come, seeking just to be close to you, that we join our voices together now as one. And we pray that most beautiful prayer that your son taught us, the Lord's Prayer, which is also on the screen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please join in singing, Great is thy faithfulness.
So from Baptist to Episcopal hymns um, to just exploring the Word of God and, and, and hearing how others hear it, sometimes it just becomes that much more alive to us. And that way, I want to invite you to join me in seeing that Jesus loves me as the kids come forward. You've already been done. Jesus loves me this time. supposed to be scary, but it's actually funny. Oh, huh, cool. Okay. I have no idea. You have any ideas, Alara? No? Can you give us a second clue, maybe? I saw the light from the diary of a wimpy kid's shoulder. It's sort of kind of like the series Diary of a Wimpy Kids. Yeah, I have a wimpy kid. You have a wimpy kid book? A lot. I was a wimpy kid. Okay. Any ideas? Nope. <laughs> What's that? Goosebumps? Is it? It's not goosebumps. Okay. All right, go ahead and show us. Oh, stand up and show everybody. Ah, I haven't seen that one before. Let me see. Oh, it's one of Rolly Jefferson's. The one. Rolly new... Jefferson's awesome, friendly, spooky stories. It's it's basically Greg's friend who. There's the main character of Diary of a Wimpy Kid, uh -huh. who decides to make one himself. God. The art is way less, and to me, it's less than in Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Well, that's okay. We're not going to grade the books right now. Okay. But what this is, yes, it's by the same author that did Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Uh, it's a spinoff of um, his best friend, and his best friend goes through some spooky situations in life. <laughs> eh? Okay, in a roundabout sense, I haven't read the books. Okay, cool. All right. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting because, believe it or not, in a roundabout way, and y'all see if you can figure this out later, this is a little bit of what I'm talking to the adults about today. Huh? Yeah, isn't that kind of cool? Yeah. So, one of the things we are going to talk about is what it means to follow Jesus as our shepherd. All right? Now, let me tell you all something that I hope you all... Uh, might be able to understand, especially in today's culture. You see, people in our world today have been calling Christians sheep for a long time. And they don't mean that in a nice way. They mean that sheep don't, can't think for themselves, that they blindly follow wherever somebody leads them to go, um, and that they're basically just dumb animals. But that is not sheep at all. Those are called lemmings. Okay. A lemming is an animal that actually... As they follow each other, if one of them falls off the cliff and he's the leader, the other ones will actually walk off a cliff on purpose following them. Y'all can look that up. It's a true fact. Okay? Sheep, on the other hand, are very smart. Okay? Sheep, when things are hard, they gather together as a community. Okay? Sheep will follow a shepherd's voice that they know and trust anywhere. They'll go through dark, scary things. And they'll go through really good places. But they're willing to go through those if they know the shepherd is with them. Sheep also do not trust people that they don't know their voice. Jesus talks about this in our scripture today. He says that when thieves and robbers try to come in and steal sheep, sheep will run away from them. You see, sheep are skittish. But they're extremely faithful to the one they know and trust. They don't follow just anybody but they follow the one that they should. And we as Christians are called to do the same thing. You see, being a Christian doesn't mean that we won't go through hard or bad times or scary times. It means that God will lead us. And as long as we follow the shepherd, follow Jesus wherever he goes, even if it's somewhere new or scary or different, like when pastor just learned a new hymn a little while ago, okay, it's still going to be good. 
And it's going to be what God wants because we're doing what the shepherd calls us to do. Okay? So even if we go through scary times in our lives, if we follow Jesus, we're doing the right thing. Let's pray. Dear God, sometimes life is scary. But I will follow you. And I know you'll lead me to a good place. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. Right, here you go. And who had the box last week? You did. So, Alara, it's... I think it was Meryl. No, she had to give it over to you for, for Lua. Alara, the box is yours. Please stop ripping apart the yarn on the carpeting. Y'all get up and go. <laughs>
have your Bibles. And we're going to be heading over to the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. John 10, 1 through 10. And as you're on your way over there, did y'all know that about sheep? Sheep are actually extremely smart animals, if you didn't know this. But they're very skittish. If they don't trust you, you are not going to get near them. And yes, when, when they're scared, they pack together. Okay? Which I think as Christians is not a bad idea for us. Because when the enemy comes, what he likes to do is he tries to get in the middle of us and scatter us around. But y'all, when that sheep <coughs> learns to trust the shepherd, they are fiercely loyal. And they can go through some of the loudest lightning, hardest storms, worst and scariest places together, and the sheep typically will follow the shepherd. Y'all, if we're not careful how many of us, if we're honest, when we see the storm, or we see the scary woods in front of us or something like that, the shepherd may be calling us, but we get our feet moved to the ground. Listen to this. This is Jesus speaking from John chapter 10, Verses 1 to 10. Very truly I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him, because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him, because they do not recognize the stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Y'all, the word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. So Jesus often would use parables. He would use stories to emphasize something, to try and unpack it so we can grasp it better. So today, if you'll allow me the liberty, where I'm going to use a little analogy here to help us understand this scripture a little bit more. All right? And to begin with, I've got a sound clip for you here. I want to see if you can figure out what this sound is. Go ahead. Do you know what that is? Car alarm. Car alarm. It's a car beeper. Yeah, car alarm. Listen with me for this non-biblical but Curtis's interpretation of the scripture we just read. <clears throat> my car knows my clicker, and my clicker knows my car. My car recognizes the sig signal of my clicker, and it recognizes no other signal. Out of the many cars in the parking lot, my clicker knows my car. You see, my car was designed to know my clicker from the factory, and my clicker was designed to know my car. And yet, with all of the seas of cars out in the parking lot, when I am lost and confused and cannot find my car, my clicker helps me find the way. <laughs> the problem is, y'all, that if you've never had a vehicle that has one of these clickers, you know that over time, if we're not careful, the signal between the car and the clicker can begin to break apart. And it breaks apart because of one of two reasons. Number one, the battery just gets low, right? How many of us, if we're honest, we feel a disconnect?
disconnect from God when we're exhausted, when we're crazy busy, when we're overwhelmed, when there's so many things going on. One of the things that, that, that's really hit my heart recently is, is to not have a spiritually divided life. To not spend time with God and do something else. To not spend time with God and make breakfast. To spend time with God and do the laundry and do this and do that. For some people, that's okay. You can do that. That's fine. I'm just talking about Curtis right now. Okay? I feel like I've been living a divided spiritual life. I have not been giving my best to God. It would be like me trying to spend time with my kids or my wife, and all they get out of me is a, uh-huh, uh-huh, right? I miss things. I miss what's happening with God. And, and if you've ever had one of those clickers that, that eventually the battery starts to wear out, okay, that, that it's not used or maintained the way it should, all of a sudden what you used to be able to do from a distance away, you've got to be a lot closer to it to get it to work, Right? And I think the same can be true of us Christians. If we spend time not, or if we don't spend enough time really exploring the Lord's relationship with us and us with Him, then we still kind of feel His presence when we get close, when we go to church, when we go to Sunday school, when we do our devotionals. But outside of that space, if we're not close enough to it, the button just doesn't seem to work and the signal isn't quite there. You know, the other thing is, sometimes uh, the signal can become a little unclear. It can become a little messed up for, for completely other reasons. Sometimes we don't even know why. How many of y'all have ever had a digital device that had a line of its own, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, that the signal, rather to remote or Wi-Fi or somewhere else, it just decided, you know what, after 10 years, yeah, I'm done. You ever had one of those before? Or it's like, out of the blue, this thing has always worked perfectly fine, all of a sudden, no signal. It just isn't working. And you just have no clue what's going on, right? And for us as Christians, there is a reason behind it. But sometimes we don't always know what the reason is that the signal isn't as clear or as crisp as it used to be. Perhaps the signal's still there, but it's not working like we think it should. Y'all ever had a car where this window worked and that one didn't? Right? Or if you ever had a car where I had one of these ones, you have to turn on the ignition, you have to hold it there. Because if you let go, the fuel snap back and turn off the car. My, my first car I ever owned, I had to drive down the road like this. It was great. <laughs> and we make compensations for this, don't we? You'll learn the trick of how to jiggle the doorknob just right so you don't even lock the car because no one else knows how to get in but you. You'll learn, oh, you just don't put that window down anymore. But the reality is, it is not working the way it's supposed to. There's a disconnect there. There's something wrong. It is not functioning properly. You know things could be better, but you're willing to live with it being the way it is. And sometimes, sometimes a signal degrades between us and God for a reason that we don't understand right away. And it's because we don't recognize something's going on in our life and God is trying to reach out to us and say, look, you don't know this, but this is the only way I can get your attention. Sometimes there's something in our lives that we need to get rid of. And it's hard to get rid of that. It's difficult. The reality is the only way for those signals to get fixed is one of two ways I'm talking, okay? As far as cars go. Miracle or mechanic? That's all you get. And you know just as well as I, you probably had one of these times when, like, the remote doesn't work or something like that, and you're freaking out, you're like, I don't know what's wrong, I've changed the batteries, I've tried this, I've tried that, set it back to the factory, and it still isn't working, and you're like, I don't know what to do! And then you wake up the next morning, and like a miracle from the Lord himself, it just works again. You ever had one of those? I think God does that in our spiritual life sometimes. Where he backs off of us. Because we've fallen into a root and routine so much that it's no longer about a relationship. He, he's trying to say to us, things could be better between us. And he's trying to get our attention. And, and it's not until we go, oh my gosh, why isn't this working? Why am I not so close to God? Why, why do I feel like this isn't as strong as it could be? And it, 
that's what he wanted. And then you wake up one day and he says, I have not forgotten you. I still love you. I still got your back. I'm still here for you. And you go, oh my goodness, praise the Lord. The signal still works. He's just trying to get your attention, y'all. He's trying to say, make me a priority in your life. But other times, other times there's something wrong mechanically speaking. Other times there's something with a signal we don't fully understand. Sometimes the window, this one works and that one doesn't. We do understand, but we're okay with living with it. And the reality is the only way to fix it, okay, means that it's going to be hard. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be costly. And it's going to be time consuming. You got to go to the mechanic. You got to hope the mechanic's not going to rip you off, right? You got to sit there and wait. They got to diagnose. You got to hope that it's not going to be $5,000. And they find out what's wrong with it. Oh, then they got to order the parts and get the parts in. Once the parts come in, then you can come back, right? Then you can sit there for about three hours while they fix your car and hope that they don't find something else that's wrong. It's uncomfortable. It's costly. It takes some time. But it's the only way to get it fixed. Y'all, sometimes we have something in our lives. We have a barrier between us and God. It's just one thing. Oh, my, my spiritual life is great with God. I feel so close to Him. I feel like I'm being fed by Him, guided by Him, always except for that one over there. Or you know what? I've been a Christian for 40 years. I've read the Bible. I've heard all the lessons. And I, I, I follow the lessons. But there's no relationship. And oh, I'm fine with that. The window can only work halfway. That's good. Sometimes what we got to do, y'all, is God is saying, look, there's something between you and I. There's a problem. There's a beef between us. There's a barrier. You can call it what you want. In the New Testament, they call it adultery. Okay? Cheat not God. You can use whatever vernacular you want, but at the end of the day, he's saying, look, there's a problem between you and me. We both know it. And we both, and you've been pretending like it's not there for years, or for days, or for months, or whatever. But the only way to fix this, to get the signal strong and get it back, is to do something uncomfortable, something time-consuming, something costly. And it's not going to be easy, but it's the only way to fix it. You know, one of the reasons that I, I think if we're not careful, we can fall into these places is because some of us have had our clickers for years, right? We've had a relationship with God for a long time. Our, our clickers are warm. Our, we're, they're so familiar to us, we don't even have to look at it. We can have it in our pocket, and we know what button we're pushing. Sometimes maybe the clicker's so worn, it's like a beautiful old Bible that the ink has faded on because it's been touched so many times. Or that the cover has fallen apart a little bit on. And that's not a bad thing. And the problem is that sometimes we can, we can get to the point where some of us, maybe our batteries are a little drained. Maybe some of us, our batteries have been replaced a couple of times. Right? And all of a sudden, it's just not as strong as it used to be. And we're sitting there going, oh, I've had this car for 10, 20 years now. Maybe it's time that things are different. Maybe it's time to upgrade. Maybe it's time to change things out. It just, it doesn't work quite like it used to. It's not as strong and helpful as it used to be. When really the only problem is, you just got to change the batteries. You just got to put the power back in it again. And we just fall into this place of complacency because we're so busy. We have so many things to do. We've been doing this for years. I've heard all the stories. That we're losing the relationship, the connection with our Creator and our Savior. We, we, we've grown accustomed to the hiccups of our car and not realizing that things can be better than they are. We don't need to settle. You know, it's interesting. I love this scripture that Jesus gives us here. Because one of the things that he talks so much about here is he says that, you know, the sheep know his voice. And they follow him. And it doesn't just say that. You know, what you need to understand is how shepherds work in the Middle East. Okay? Well, what would it, we don't understand here in the States. The way shepherds work in the States here, we move sheep by fear and control. We have dogs to do it. We even have national competitions on those dogs. Right? We push those sheep out of fear. But if you ever go to the Middle East, one of the cool things is 
If you ever see a shepherd, they almost never have a dog. And the way that they work is they walk in front of the sheep and 95% of the time don't look back. And they sit there and talk to them nonstop. Over and over and over. Sometimes they'll sing. Sometimes they'll chant. Sometimes they'll just do clicks. Um, I had a professor who was in uh, Jerusalem, or uh, and, and I didn't see this, but he did. And he said he, he sat there and watched these sheep follow this shepherd across the, the hills of Bethlehem, and he just sat there and went, Nasa. The shepherd was continuously talking to him. The shepherd never once stopped talking. And the sheep followed. You see, when the shepherd had to go into town or go see family or something, they would go to a sheep pen. And the gatekeeper would stand guard and throw all the sheep in and the shepherd would come. But the problem was these gigantic pens were so big that thieves and robbers learned, if I go around back and no one can see me, I can jump over and start stealing the sheep. But the sheep don't know the robbers and thieves. And so what do they do? They scatter. That's how the gatekeeper knows something is wrong when the good sheep scatter and they will not stay together. It's a wolf, it's a thief, it's something. He can see that movement from a distance, so he goes and he checks it out. So how does the shepherd get the sheep out? I mean, once they're all mixed in there with everybody else, not like they paint one blue and one red. Literally, the shepherd would stand at the gate and call to them. And all of that guy's sheep would just come out together and stand behind him and just sit there. Why? Because the sheep knew his voice and they followed him wherever he went. Sometimes there was a few stragglers going, hey, Karen, hey, Bob, come on, let's go, pay attention. And he'd get them out. But it'd take a little bit. You see, in the States, we push sheep by fear, anxiety. And over there, they follow because they want to be close to the shepherd. They trust the shepherd. The sheep will scatter here in the States at the, big, at the smallest thunder. Over there, the sheep will get closer together. So which are we? Where are we at in this concept? You know, about two and a half years ago, I began wearing these guys here. And I remember telling you all um, that I was driving down the road with my wife, and I, I didn't realize how much I couldn't see. I had no idea. Everyone's like, oh, you can see the leaves on the trees. I'm like, I can see them. That's fine. So we're driving down the road, and I tell my wife, hey, baby, just out of the blue, uh, you tell me when you can see that sign clearly. And she goes, now. Nah. And I go, Oh, good to know. <laughs> what about that one there? You know, maybe let's try this again. Right now. Oh, that's interesting. Right. I got glasses, and I didn't realize how tired my eyes were because they were forcing themselves to strain so hard all the time. I didn't realize what I could not see. I didn't realize how much pain I was in until I had the peace and freedom. I'm going to be a little vulnerable with you all right now, okay? Uh, you may or may not have noticed this, but for the last few weeks, I've been wearing hearing aids. And it's not that I can't hear volume. It's that I can't hear pitch. I don't have to turn the volume up on things. But my little girls, their high-pitched voices, were sitting there driving down the road, and those two little girls in the way, way back in the van, I'm sitting there going, stop mumbling. Over and over again to him. Stop mumbling. I can't hear you. And then I realize my wife is responding to them. She can hear him fine. I have no idea. I have no clue. I would be counseling people and I'd have to ask them to repeat themselves because when they tell me something personal and vulnerable, their voices get quieter. I have no idea. There was actually tension and anxiety in my life because I was constantly getting upset with my kids because they wouldn't speak up and I'd tell them to stop mumbling as little kids when the problem wasn't them. It was me. And I had no idea. 
You know, it wasn't until I did something rather embarrassing for a 39-year-old guy and looked into changing something of me to be more the way I was designed to work that things got better. Y'all, so I share this with you for two reasons. One, honestly, the same reason I shared about the glasses. Perhaps there's somebody here that has been thinking about getting this checked out and you kind of felt ashamed like I did. Do it. Okay? But, but also because sometimes we can let the signal degrade between us and God so much and we can rationalize it away. We can think it's okay, I'm too busy, I've got too many other things going on. And at the end of the day, what we can accidentally do is we can basically tell God, God, you're more, the most important thing in my life and this. It's not that something's more important to you than God, but God, you're the most important to me and fix my breakfast. And do the laundry. Maybe for us it's, there's something in that signal that there's just something off and we haven't spent time with God to get it cleared up. Maybe, maybe we just haven't changed the batteries in a while. For some of us. And this is why I think a lot of pastors miss this moment right here. And I'm guilty too if I'm not careful. For some of us, you're sitting here today thinking through all this, being honest and open with yourself and going, yeah, but I feel close to God. Y'all, take that as a blessing. Accept that. Be okay with that. There's nothing wrong with saying, yeah, me and God, we're okay right now. So you are welcome and encouraged to dwell in that space. Whatever the challenge is for you, I encourage you to clear the signal between you and God. Because your shepherd is constantly talking to you. And he knows your name. Let's get back in the habit of hearing his voice. Let's pray. Heavenly Father God, for the ways that I have made this about me and not you, please forgive me. For the ways that you are trying to show me how to hear you more clearly, and I didn't even realize it. Thank you. And I pray the same strength over my brothers and sisters here as we seek to be your sheep, not trusting everybody, but fiercely loyal to you. We pray this in Christ's name. the chaos and the problems, he's taken me to a good place. And it was some of the most beautiful places with some of the most lush feasts for my soul. And I was so consumed with trying to get all the work done, I completely missed it. I missed the beauty of what God was trying to give me. I'm sitting there gorging myself spiritually on the grass right next to me, completely missing what God is doing in my life because I'm trying to do what's right. My friends, maybe God is leading you to a new pasture, a new place. 
Yes, that means trusting him along the journey. And yes, it means you're not going to get there unless you actually go. But also don't miss the blessings when you get there of how God is trying to feed your soul. So receive that as your mission and your blessing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.